All right, so review for the day. Coming up on my last week, at least of the 30 day challenge piece. Experiment, whatever you wanna call it. And I know it'll continue because I'm realizing that it's such a journey, realizing what it takes to become a happy person. It's a lot more intense of a journey than I expected. I didn't think it would. I don't know, I guess I had in my mind, if you just kind of stop the tough stuff you're doing and you focus on feeling great and being happy, it's a cakewalk and it's not. It's a, a journey of what really makes me happy and what do I like doing? And I'm, I'm so used to pushing through and doing so many things um, regardless of how I feel about them because they're the right thing to do that I can't just shut that off. I've got years of momentum behind that. And so many good things are happening and I've had so many amazing, deep, fulfilling experiences over the last weeks, but especially the last days. Today, I went up into the mountains with my doggy and my husband up to a beautiful reservoir and canyon. It was gorgeous, hiked around. My dog swam, my dog doesn't swim. He refuses to get in the water and swim. He'll get up to his like, you know, shoulders, but he won't jump all the way in and he did today, he swam. And it was so beautiful. I mean, I'm, as you can see, I got kissed by the sun. We made out a little too hard and I got a hickey. It's a sun hickey. But it was wonderful. Everything about it was so picture perfect and satisfying. Drive is beautiful. And I had such a sense of that the journey is all there is. You know, we're driving there and I kept pulling over to let people by because I just want to drive and enjoy the view and I'm going the speed limit, but that's not enough for anyone. And so we pull over and like people are just flying by. And I, I realize we're so focused on the destination. I have to get there. Like somehow that's going to make me feel better. And I'm coming to this place of realizing that if I don't feel good along the way, if I don't enjoy the journey, that's all there is. You get to a destination, you end up going somewhere else, right? It's just a journey to go somewhere else or to go back home or um, there's no where we're trying to get to. And even if you feel great in arriving at a destination, it's fleeting, it lasts, and then you want a new destination. So it's about enjoying where we are and having a lot of insights about the true power of the present. I mean, I've read that a million times. It's in so many different philosophies and books and I'm really starting to get it that there is no future. It's always now. And that the past is irrelevant. Whether it happened or not, it doesn't matter. We can't change it, it's gone. And all of our power is in the present. And what we focus on is so important. So I've come to a lot of places where I've realized, oh my gosh, I vibe at worry. I'm realizing I have such a hard time being in the moment or being present because I always feel like there's something else I'm supposed to be doing. I should be struggling more. I should be doing the harder thing. There's something in me that's trained to struggle and says I shouldn't be allowed to relax or kick back or do what I enjoy because there's other things I should be doing and I'm so good at pushing through and doing the right things to do that it can be very uncomfortable at times to do what I enjoy doing and realizing that that's Something where there's a lot of momentum, but also realizing I, that's not where I want to focus. That's just going to cause that to grow. I want to focus on what I want and where I'm going and what's happening, which is happiness and believing that great things happen and feeling passionate. And what does it really take to be happy? It's, it's a really interesting question because most of the things that make us happy are so fleeting. And even if you can find a way completely out of your struggle with, Something so common these days, which is drinking, like say you have a couple of drinks and you feel better, you come down and your life is there. And I feel so blessed that I am sober now, I've, I've, but I've had my struggles with that. And I see more and more others having their struggles with that, but also most people on the spiritual or personal development track have had that struggle or are going through it. There's something about addiction that seems to be married with the spiritual journey. And I do believe it's a spiritual disease and requires a spiritual solution. And if I hadn't been an alcoholic, I actually wouldn't have started spiritual study. I had decided to be an atheist and I didn't want to have anything to do with any of that. And it was 100% my alcoholism beating me to a pulp that forced me 
to begin to make a connection to spirituality. And oh my gosh, I love it so much now. It's like the most important thing to me studying this. And I don't know what I'm trying to figure out. I mean, I, I love piecing together all these different thought processes. Of course, of Miracles, Alan Watts, Neville Goddard, Abraham, Carolyn Meese. I mean, on and on. I have so many different books and thought processes and different faiths, you know, the Taoism and Buddhism and Christianity and Islam and uh, the Vedanta and, and Indian sort of thought processes in Buddhism and Bhagavad Gita and Taoism and the idea of us being so connected to nature. And I, I love studying A Course of Miracles. And But sometimes I question myself, for what? I mean, even the people that go in front of you, the, the spiritual giants that I'm, that I'm listing, are still came to their own demise and not always in the most lovely way. And I guess I have it just like everyone else, that people who are super spiritual should not have all the struggles that humans have, but that's a bit silly. I mean, I guess you could say Buddha and Jesus, but I mean, Jesus still got crucified and Buddha um, still passed eventually. They did amazing things and left incredible legacies and her household names several thousand years later. So something was achieved. And there seems to be a push for more of this and a bigger desire for a lot of this material and studying it. And But how is it that we can find out that our thoughts create reality? We're literally creating this reality with our thoughts and beginning to get that more and more and keep forgetting that or not know it, or not notice that that's what Jesus was talking about in the Bible, or make it the most important thing to learn. There is nothing else. Like, that should be so freeing and inspiring that we can, we are responsible for everything that happens to us. But nine out of 10 people, if you tell them that they're responsible for what happens to them, like it seems to me to be so inspiring and amazing that you could, for example, if you cause your own diseases, you can heal yourself with your mind. That to me is like the coolest news ever, but nine out of 10 people, if you tell them that, are gonna be really pissed off. They don't wanna hear that. They don't hear it as something inspiring. They wanna be a victim. They wanna believe that it just happened to them. And why is that? Why do we wanna give all of our power away? I guess believing that your thoughts create reality is the ultimate form of accountability. And a lot of folks aren't in for that game and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not here to say what other people should be into. I just do find it a little surprising. But then I found out that Alan Watts was dealing with alcoholism in his later years and that kind of blew my mind too. Someone who's so enlightened and knows so much and it doesn't change the power of their teaching. And maybe his teachings are more powerful now because he's passed and he's not physical and he's not struggling with those human issues anymore. And I guess when I listened to him, he was a bit intellectualized. He didn't really talk about it in relation to his own personal experience. And that's one thing that I really do wanna do is share how these things apply to my personal life and personal experience. that the shift in me can create a shift in others, not just from your mind and understanding the nature of reality and the nature of our beliefs and how it defines our reality, which I think is so vital and so important, but really applying it to actually change our realities and actually change how we feel. I wanna jump out of, the, out of bed every morning because I'm so excited for my life. I'm not there yet. I still have this thing of sort of a nagging downer a bit at me that something's wrong, that something always has to be wrong, whether I gotta worry about money or job or things to do or there's something there. But my husband helped me come up with a really good process tonight to sort of get rid of that by putting it in a box and sealing it up. And it actually helped. So the way I sort of cope with my feelings is going to shift here over the next few days. And um, I've been very busy enjoying life with my husband who's on vacation. So I haven't had as much bandwidth to focus on feelings. And in some ways that's great. And in some ways I want to focus on this right now because I feel that there's important 
clarity and, and breakthrough for me in it. Where it's leading, I guess I have no idea, but I don't need to know. I don't have to have it all hammered out. I used to think I used to have need things to be all hammered out and all fixed. But maybe there's something to just getting connected to other people who are striving to be happy. And as we all get happier together, or maybe if you get connected to me and I'm striving to be happier, you'll automatically get happy or as I get happier and automatically start doing things that make you happier and collectively, and I'll be connected to you because you're connected to me and there's no other option. The happier you get, the happier I'll become. And collectively we can sort of move forward and take it up a notch. The Course of Miracles gets deep into that and I love that. And I love this idea that everything is connected and sort of Alan Watts had a great way of saying it, sort of blending Taoism with, I don't even know what he's blending it with, but just that life is happening all together. It's one process. I'm not having a separate life of cause and effect where things are happening to me and things are happening to that person over there, but literally it's all happening together. And there's some sort of really big, beautiful dance going on here together. And I feel the more power I can get over my own dance and energy and impulse or more connected to that which knows sort of this grandiose dance that's going on and follow that impulse, the more joy and power will be brought forth in all of our experience but certainly mine. And I hope that's what I can show. I've definitely made huge strides in personal health, mental health, physical health, and joy. And I'm, I'm ready to take it even further. So that's where I'm at tonight.